Hello and welcome to worship everyone. We are so glad that you've joined us this evening for our last November thankfulness worship series. We sure hope that your Wednesday night time with us this month has inspired you to think more about being thankful. How about we all get our candles out? Do you have yours? Come on, let's turn them on and remember that we're all here together during this time. That's my family's favorite part, <laughs> at least Dottie's. <laughs> Got to turn all the lights off in the house and turn the candle on. <laughs> but I need your help to sing along. Our first song is We Are Called. Beth. Now how about we all fold our hands and join together in our opening prayer. Lord, please use our actions to show our thankfulness to you. Help us to humbly serve others and be thankful as we serve. Amen. So tonight we're going to think a bit about how thankfulness to God and others leads to thankfulness <coughs> through service. <clears throat> Our Bible passage for tonight comes from the book of John, chapter 13. It takes us to one evening in the final week of Jesus' time here on earth and his Passover gathering with his disciples, the Last Supper. If you remember that lesson, Jesus and the disciples find a room where they can eat their last Passover meal together. But remember, the disciples don't know this will be their last dinner with Jesus. And as always, Jesus is teaching them another lesson while they spend time together. Let's listen as Beth reads. Before the Passover celebration, Jesus knew that his hour had come to leave this world and return to his Father. He had loved his disciples during his ministry on earth, and now he loved them to the very end. It was time for supper, 
and the devil had already prompted Judas, son of Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had given him authority over everything and that he had come to, from God and would return to God. So he got up from the table, took off his robe, wrapped a towel around his waist, and poured water into a basin. Then he began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them with the towel he had around him. When Jesus came to Simon Peter, Peter said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you don't understand now what I am doing, but someday you will. No, Peter protested, you will never, ever wash my feet. Jesus replied, unless I wash you, you won't belong to me. Simon Peter exclaimed, then wash my hands and my head as well, Lord, not just my feet. Jesus replied, a person who has bathed all over does not need to wash except for the feet to be entirely clean. And you disciples are clean, but not all of you. For Jesus knew who would betray him. That is what he meant when he said, not all of you are clean. Jesus washed their feet. If you remember hearing about this story before, you'll remember that during Jesus' time, people would have washed their feet as they entered someone's home because of all the dirt and dust they had likely collected on their sandaled feet as they traveled outside. This task of foot washing, however, was considered to be the job of the servants of the house. It was sort of a lowly job. I mean, it's washing people's dirty feet, right? You can imagine the disciples' surprise when Jesus readied himself to wash their feet. Peter's reaction says it all, really. He says, no, you will never, ever wash my feet. He couldn't believe what he was hearing. So if foot washing was such a gross task, and the disciples were upset at the idea of their friend, their Lord, washing their feet, why did Jesus do it? Why did Jesus take the time to perform this lowly task? Remember how last week we talked about leading by example? Well, this is a golden example of that concept. Jesus was showing the disciples how to behave and how to serve others in the most humbling, sincere way he could, by washing their feet. In verse 7, Jesus says, You don't understand now what I am doing, but someday you will. He knew the disciples couldn't understand why he was washing their feet. They had no idea what was about to happen. They had no idea that Jesus was about to be betrayed by one of them, suffer cruel treatment at the hands of the government, and then die on the cross for them for us. Jesus' death and resurrection needed to take place before the disciples could truly understand everything Jesus had done while he was here on earth. We can understand the disciples' lack of comprehension. We can understand how they didn't get what was going on. We can relate to the disciples in this due to the fact that even now, with access to the Bible, and studies about the Bible, and scholarly interpretations of the Bible, we still can't fully understand all of the information in the Bible. We still can't comprehend what it means to us, how great of a sacrifice it was for Jesus to die for us. And we never will while we're on this earth. You don't understand now what I'm doing, but someday you will. Jesus made that promise to the disciples, and in that same regard, we're promised the same thing. Someday, we will understand. But first, we need to get to heaven. First, we have to spend our time here on this earth behaving in ways that please and glorify God, helping those who need our help, 
caring for those who are sick, feeding those who are hungry, clothing those who are naked. We have to spend our time here on earth living like Jesus did. Can you remember the stories of the times when Jesus went out of his way to help others by healing them? Can you remember all of the lessons Jesus taught his disciples about how to treat others even when nobody else would help them? Do you remember the stories of when Jesus would find himself looking up at the disapproving eyes of the authorities who were trying to discredit him and make him look bad, but he challenged them and never failed to provide a life lesson to them, even though they were not listening with their hearts? Jesus was all about serving others by doing the right thing. Verses 12 through 17 of John 13 say this. After washing their feet, he put his robe on again and sat down and asked, Do you understand what I was doing? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, because I am. And since I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash each other's feet. I have given you an example to follow. Do as I have done to you. I will tell you the truth. Slaves are not greater than their master, nor is the messenger more important than the one who sends the message. Now that you know these things, God will bless you for doing them. I have given you an example to follow. Do as I have done to you. When Jesus said those words, did he mean specifically that the disciples should go out and wash everyone's feet? No, he didn't. What the disciples would come to learn and what we should always remember as well is that Jesus meant for them to go out into the world and humbly serve others. By doing so, the disciples would share the glory of God with all of those around them. And we can do that too. We can serve God humbly as we work for others, as we provide for others, as we stand up for others. It is a privilege to serve God, so thankfulness through service is a great way to honor him. How do you serve God by helping others. I want you to think about that tonight and tomorrow, maybe while you're having Thanksgiving dinner with your family or as you enjoy some quiet time during the day, discuss that amongst yourselves. How do you serve God by helping others? And then talk about how that plays into being thankful. When you're serving others, how does that make you feel thankful? When you're serving others, how do you think they feel? How do you feel inside your heart when you serve others? And how do people see your actions while you're serving them? Hint, hint, friends, we are the hands and feet of God, and others see him through us. And on that note, we're going to start to wrap things up for the evening. And I just want to say I hope that you and yours have a safe and blessed Thanksgiving holiday tomorrow. I know that times are tough and unfair and just so weird right now, but I sincerely pray for you each to have a day filled with love and laughter and peace. Take some time to look for things to be thankful for. Take time to appreciate something you might not have noticed before. Take time to be quiet and let God in your hearts. And take good care of each other, friends. I have some actions for the, our next song that I just want to review quickly. And we'll start from the top. We are going to march. So you march, 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 march. Ride in the cavalry like you're riding a horse. Hold on to the reins. Bounce, bounce, bounce. Shooting the artillery, we're gonna clap and stretch that arm back. Fly over the enemy, gotta pretend you're an airplane. 
I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir. Need the salutes there. Okay, let's do it, folks. I may never march in the infantry, ride in the cavalry, shoot in the artillery. I may never fly or the enemy, but I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir. Gonna slow it down. I may never march in the infantry. A little faster. Ride in the cavalry. Shoot in the artillery. A little faster. I may never fly or the enemy, but I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir. Faster. I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir. I may never march in the infantry, ride in the cavalry, shoot in the artillery. I may never fly or the enemy, but I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir. Great listening, everybody. <laughs> well, I want to thank you for taking some time today to make music with me. This is something I look forward to every week, and I hope you do too. Um, as you prepare for Thanksgiving, I just hope you remember that each and every one of you is a blessing to someone, and I'm so thankful for you, and I pray that you all have a safe and happy Thanksgiving. So we're going to close our time with our benediction. You ready? Here we go. Who are we? We are a missionary force of Christians. What do we do? Offer the care and compassion of Christ. To whom? To all. And where do we meet you? Wherever you are on life's journey. That's it from us, guys. But again, we're going to let you watch a little announcement from our friend Lynn Pettit. We'll follow this. And we'll be back next Wednesday. Happy Thanksgiving! Woo! Happy Turkey Day! Take care! I'm here to share information about the annual Christmas project sponsored by the Women's Fellowship and Service Group. In past years, we have asked for donations so that we could buy Christmas gifts for families in need. We got the information from a hubby as to the families we could assist. As well as we all know, the COVID pandemic has forced us to make many changes in the ways that we serve. Since Mahabi was not sure that they were going to do a Christmas project, we decided to focus our project on our church families who have been affected by the issues surrounding the pandemic. We're hoping to make Christmas a little brighter for them, and we need your help in two different ways. First of all, we need to know who needs our help. We have created a nomination form, which can be found on the welcome table in the narthex. For those who cannot get to the church, Beth has agreed to fill out a form over the phone if you call her with the information. All of this information will be kept confidential, and all nominations should be turned into the church by December 6th. Secondly, we need your financial contributions. You have been extremely generous in the past, and we've been able to make Christmas a little nicer for families in crisis. Since we aren't comfortable shopping together this year, we plan on using the funds for gift, food, and gas cards, which can be purchased with limited contact with others. Look for the red gift box in the narthex or mail your gift to the church. Please use Christmas Project 2020 in the memo line on your check. Contributions are due by December 6th. Thank you once again for supporting this important project.